Hey guys! So today I wanted to show you how to draw white fur in graphite. So white fur is something that I find really hard to draw sometimes, whether it's in graphite or in colored pencil, because while it looks white when you're looking at the photo, it's usually not actually white, and it sometimes it's really hard when you're drawing on white paper to find that balance between making sure that it looks like white fur and not a darker color, but also making sure that it's dark enough so that you can see the individual parts of the fur and it does look like fur and not just a blank white space. So to show you guys, is how I draw white fur. I'm using this drawing that I did of Nova, who is an Australian Shepherd. So her neck and chest area is pretty much all white. So I wanted to use this section to show you how I did it and how you can apply this to your own drawings. So my first tip for trying to draw white fur is to make sure that you put your reference photo into black and white. If you're trying to draw it from color, it's gonna make it a lot harder. So you wanna be able to see the different values and converting the photo to black and white will really help you do that. Like I say in a lot of my videos, I also think it's helpful to put it into Photoshop or some other kind of editing software that'll allow you to see exactly what the color is in each section. So when you're doing a black and white photo, you're not looking at it to see what the color is but to see what the value is. Sometimes there's spots that in the reference photo they truly do look white but when you put it into Photoshop and you look at the color with the dropper tool it isn't actually white. A lot of times I find that spots that look white are actually a lot darker than you think so putting it into the editing software will really help you see those different values and this will help you make sure that you're getting the contrast that you need to make it look like white fur and also have enough definition so that you can tell that it's fur. So what I do for white fur is I find the spots that are the darkest to start with. Because you're trying to keep the whole thing overall pretty light, you want to make sure that you start in your darkest area and get those to be the value that you want so that in comparison the rest of it will look right. Say you started with the lightest portion and then went to the darkest, it might be a little bit harder to make sure that the darkest area is really as dark as it should be. Usually with white fur there are spots that are a lot darker than you think they might be and showing that contrast and that depth in the in the value will really help it look truly like fur and look like white fur. For this drawing, there was a couple spots that were underneath her mouth and her tongue that were the darkest, so I started there. I actually did use a darker pencil for this. I think it was a 4B. I made sure that it was darker, but not, you know, quite as dark as the areas that I had that weren't white fur. Um, so using the the 4B was helpful for this one little area. The rest of the spots for the white fur, I either used a 2B or an H pencil. One thing though that will help you no matter what pencil you're using is you wanna use a very, very light hand when you're trying to do white fur because if, if you're too heavy handed and your marks, your marks will end up being too dark and then you won't be able to erase or blend it as well as you should so that it, it gets a more consistent color. So after I do the darkest section, then I went through and blended with my paintbrush and used the H pencil to get kind of an overall very light gray with the, the pencil. Because like I said, you don't want to leave that whole space white, like the white of the paper, because it won't look like individual pieces of fur. So if you think about it, the parts that are darker and are gray are the parts that are what you're seeing underneath. So you want to make sure that you have that depth underneath so that it really truly looks like fur and you're seeing those individual pieces of fur. It's good to get that kind of base gray tone and then I went back over it with my mono zero eraser to pull out the highlights and get those very light white pieces of fur and you can see right away that that does give the look of white fur because you have those darker parts that are still underneath and then you have the lighter parts on top so it really does give a look of fur and what you realize is that you need those darker portions underneath like I said they're a lot darker than you might think you can see the spots that I haven't done yet. If you left it like that, it would just look, a, look like a big white space. It would look unfinished. It wouldn't look like you actually tried to draw the fur. So the main tools that I used for this part was the H pencil, the 2B pencil, the mono zero eraser, and my paintbrush to blend. This is a time where I think using the paintbrush is really, really helpful because it blends it so lightly. You don't have to worry about the blending tool 
leaving marks that you don't want. So it softly blends it out without leaving any marks of its own. So then you can really go back and keep adding to it. So really all I kept doing with this section was with the H pencil going back and adding little bits of definition in in between the pieces of fur, blending it, and then going back with the eraser and making the parts that I wanted really, really white as white as possible. And I just kept repeating this till there was enough contrast that it did look like white fur. Another thing to remember is that normally you're going to have some other area in the drawing that's going to be a huge contrast to the white fur. So whether it's the mouth, the nose, the eyes, in this section, I think the collar really helps pull that contrast. So you want to make sure that those other areas that you're working on do get really, really dark if they're meant to be black or even if they're just darker in color. That will also help in comparison, though that white section will look really white even if when you zoom in and you look at that section, it does look darker than you would expect white fur to look. Again, I think it's really important to keep going back and comparing with your reference photo. As long as you converted it to black and white, that'll really help you see the contrast that you need and make sure that you can double check that you got the, the parts of the white fur actually dark enough to make it look realistic. For this dog, her fur is a lot longer, so it was more like hair. But if you had shorter fur, you could do the same thing. You would just obviously be using shorter pencil strokes. So this technique can really be applied to any kind of white fur or even white hair. So if you're drawing someone that has white or extremely light colored hair, this would work as well. You want to make sure that you start off with those darker sections. You really want to compare to your reference photo and really make sure that you are getting those dark values. It's really easy to go too light because you're drawing something that's white, so you don't want to make it too dark, but you really do still need that contrast, even in white fur, to make it look realistically like fur. And like I said, as long as you have the contrast in the other parts of your drawing, it will look white even if when you zoom in on that one section, it's not completely white. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and if you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section. And if you have any other graphite techniques that you'd like to see videos on, go ahead and put that in the comments as well and I will work on them as soon as possible. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for future tutorials. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.